What's the scariest thing to a Wheel of Time noob? The slog! Hey, what's up, bookworms, or should I say wheelies? What's happening, wheelies? Uh, I know I did a video a little while back uh, about things I was uh, thinking about as I was approaching the, the so-called slog in Wheel of Time, and that is books 7 through 10, which uh, at this point, I feel like a, a broken record when I got to say I understand that that term really developed from people who had been waiting you know, years in between the release of these books and people that have binge read the series like I do, uh, that they never had this this problem really, uh, except for uh, Crossroads of Twilight. Apparently that's unanimously just a, a not liked book, let's put it that way. Uh, so what I kind of wanted to talk about today is just a few of the, and again, if this is kind of a rehash of the slog video, I apologize. It's things that are just, I'm trying to keep myself fresh on it, guys, because I haven't read a Wheel of Time book since May. And I want to make sure that I'm back in the right frame of mind. Actually, I don't think it was May. Was it May? God, it might have been May. Jeez, time flies. Um, but there are some things that I want to see happen. So basically what I'm going to talk about today is my wish list for A Crown of Swords. Um, I know that the real complaint with the slog is that uh, not as much action happens. I'm okay with action. What I like is focus on some characters. And so my wish list is going to be all about Things that I hope happen with the characters. Uh, first up, we got to talk about my boy Rand. What I want Rand to do, stop being soft. And I don't think he's been that soft. Uh, but basically his, uh, oh, I can't hurt a woman thing. I mean, I understand when this was written. It was a little different, different times and like that. You want to be chivalrous. And obviously, yes, if we're talking real world, obviously that applies. We're talking about a fantasy world and we're talking about evil women. Most only, most... Notably, uh, a lot of the Aes Sedai that are evil, uh, or some of the Forsaken that are evil. I like saying evil that way. Don't you like saying evil that way? Uh, so what I say when I want him to stop being soft is, look what happened to you in Lord of Chaos. It's because you got soft. You didn't listen to what Moraine told you. Don't be trusting any Aes Sedai, brother. And he just went ahead and trusted him. So uh, I don't want to say I, I don't want to say like rule with an iron fist, but I'd like him to get a good old DTA, don't trust anybody kind of attitude here, uh, except maybe Matt. And let's talk about Matt. You know my wish list for Matt in this book? Uh, I hope that he does whatever it is that makes the fandom love him so much. Because I like Matt, but people are like, he is hands down the greatest character in Wheel of Time. And I'm just like, through six books, I'm like, I guess I just don't see it yet. I mean, I like him. I, 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 it's, he's interesting. He's fun sometimes when he's not brooding. But other than that, I was like, I don't see what he's doing that just makes him so far above everyone else. So I'm hoping that you know this arc starts where Matt's just the uh, the fun, good old time every single time he's on the page that I hear about whenever I hear people talk about this series as a whole. Uh, with Perrin, well, I'm just hoping he's in the goddamn book. Uh, because I, when I did my, my faux power rankings, which I never actually officially released, I might do that someday, my, my Wheel of Time power rankings. Uh, my power rankings of characters, and I said, I understand that Perrin gets a lot of hate, but uh, I, right now, I feel like he's at the top of my list. Yeah, he's broody, but you know what? He does what's right, and when he shows up, fool shows up with a pack, if you know what I'm saying. And I just, I felt like him disappearing for one and three quarters books uh, after Shadow Rising really disappointed me, if I'm getting that number right. I think it was, it was all of... All the fires of heaven and most of Lord of Chaos. I believe he was absent, and that just that drove me nuts. I mean, you got books this big, and I know you got a lot of characters, but don't don't disappear like my favorite characters. But speaking of disappearing characters, let's talk about um, my boy Lan. Lan, when I read that first book, Lan immediately shot to the top of my power rank. He said, I loved Lan so much, I couldn't get enough of Lan. I wanted to see more Lan in the next book. And he's like early in there. He's helping Rand learn how to sword fight early in the second book. And then he is reduced to cameos the rest of the time that I've seen him. Uh, I have been told, uh, spoiled? I have been told that he shows up later in the series. And that, that is why he has such a following. I just has such a following, I guess, because I loved him in that first book. And uh, yeah, now that he's like bonded to a, a, another Aes Sedai, which we all know that ain't going to last. So basically, again, just like a parent, I hope he's in it. I hope he shows up. 
I mean, I think it's inevitable that he's going to end up being bonded to Naive, right? I mean, it's, it's inevitable. It's, it's, to me, that one's been telegraphed like crazy. And, and that, that, that's cool. That's cool. I just, I hope it's not forced. I hope it just, if you've, you've dragged it on this long, I hope it, I hope it goes through. Uh, next up, let's talk about Naive. Uh, you know what I want Naive to do? I want her just to say, you know what? Fuck everybody. I'm better than you at this. I'm better at you at this. I'm better than you at this. And Egwene, you may be the omelet seat, but I'm better than you at that. Uh, so I, I said I understood now. At the time, I didn't. When I did my, my Fires of Heaven review right here, uh, I did say I didn't understand why they would have made uh, Egwene the omelet seat when Nynaeve was better than her at everything. And it's like, that's why I stopped recording those videos immediately after I finished reading them because I didn't have time to, to let it marinate. Now, when I finish a big, heavy book, I like to take two or three days before I do a review for it so I can let it marinate and I can think about things. It's very clearly, duh, they thought that Egwene would be you know, easier to control, be the puppet. That made a lot of sense. Uh, but at the time, I was just like, I felt like just because Robert Jordan had that vision in book two, uh, uh, Brand's vision of him seeing all his life, different possible lifetimes and him seeing uh, Egwene as the Omelette seat was going to be why you know, he put her on there like he felt like he was forced to. But after I thought about it, no, no, def definitely, definitely it's because they felt like they can control her. And <laughs> all everyone has to do is hang around a going, um, sorry, naive for about an hour to know you ain't controlling her. So yeah, I want her just to embrace the heel role and just be like, come at me, you know, do something about it. You know, but the only one who stood up to her really so far is, uh, is Matt. So, hey, maybe that's why people uh, love him so much. For Egwene, I don't know, I feel like Egwene gets so much hate from the fandom. And it might be stuff that she does later. I don't know. So far, I just feel like she's just kind of there. Uh, every time I, I... I've said I don't like the way... I know it's because they were childhood friends and whatever. I, I, I hate the way that, you know, Rand's supposed to be the super powerful leader of men, and leader of mankind, really. And everyone's and everyone's like super respectful, fears them, does what they're told to do, or, or they really super respect them. And, you know, it's just her and Avienda just like blasting him you know just fucking with him in front of everybody and i and i hope that that's a, a a trope that that robert jordan changes going forward because i'm like it's hard to gain the respect of your men when you've got a bunch of people just disrespecting you openly out front i mean it's just it's like when you got one parent reprimanded you know going behind the other parent and being like no don't do that don't do that in front of the kid you know say it to me in private don't do that Say these things to me in private. You want to joke like we're old friends in private? That's cool. Don't do it in front of my, you know, my the forces that I'm commanding. I think that's really uh, just a bad, bad decision. And, I mean, I guess that's most of the the, the, the other characters. Uh, Tom and Loyal have just kind of been MIA. Uh, I, I definitely would like to see more of them. Uh, I, I think I feel like I got enough of the Aes Sedai and the uh, the Forsaken now that where I ain't got to be like every book saying, uh, I need to see more of them. I need to see more of them. In fact, I think we might have got a little too much Forsaken in the last book, uh, but I mean, it was it was time, you know, six books in, I felt like it was definitely, definitely time. Uh, but as far as like story progression, really I just wanna see Rand stop being so cautious with his powers. Just dude, just go all in. Listen to that crazy voice in your head, you know? <laughs> Maybe you guys can work together a little more because last time you guys worked together, things worked out just fine. So um, that's my really short, short uh, wish list, I guess. For, for a crown of swords. I know after I finish this, I'm going to think about some other character that I did not think about. And is that the worst drawing? Is that supposed to be Rand? Because that might be that might be the worst drawing of Rand I've ever seen. And he's supposed to be like 19 at this point? He looks like it could be my dad. Yeah, so the, the, the artwork on these is really hit or miss. Um, so what the thing is, is I did that did that big vote and the, uh, the Liza Lachlamora actually won. But uh, the... Uh, the Crown of Swords came in second, so I am going to start Crown of Swords after I finish the Lies of Loch Lamora. So a little early. My, my, my date for this was January 1st of 2020. I was going to start this and just kind of enjoy the holidays. But uh, if Lies of Loch Lamora is as good as you guys say it is, I don't think it'll last me through the, the rest of the year. So I'll definitely be getting back on that wheel. The wheel will start turning again very, very soon, guys. So uh, thanks for taking this journey with me. If you haven't yet, please watch. I got a ton of... Of Wheel of Time videos where I talk about up here. I talk about everything from the TV show to the book reviews. I've reviewed the first six books. They are full spoiler. But if you're watching this video, I don't know why you would be hearing me talk about the seventh Wheel of Time book if you haven't read them yet. Uh, definitely recommend reading them. I don't think I've been super, super spoiler heavy in this, but there might be some things in there you might not have liked if you haven't read any of them yet. So uh, yeah, those books, book reviews are all spoilers because the whole reason I began this channel 
Uh, I actually didn't mean to start it as a book review channel. What I was doing was just making like video diaries. Uh, so I remember what happened in each book so I could always go back to them and reference them. And I went ahead and just posted those videos on my YouTube channel and was just shocked at how big the Will of Time community was. So uh, I have you guys and Will of Time to thank for actually keeping this channel going because if it wasn't for that, I don't know that I'd be doing this at all. So I I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to get back on Wheel of Time and talk to you guys about it. So if you want to talk in the comments below, please feel free. There are spoilers allowed, except please keep it to the first six books. I went this far in the series. I'd rather not be spoiled at this point. So please keep it just to the first six books if you're going to talk spoilers. Nothing from 7 through 14, including New Spring. I haven't read New Spring yet because I know it's a prequel, but I don't know when it's okay to read New Spring. How far in the series do I need to be to, before I read New Spring? Is it just until that, that big event in Fires of Heaven? Uh, if you guys want to answer that below, I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys, and the wheel will start turning soon.